Hi everyone, welcome back into the uh, studio out here in uh, Pennsylvania today. I'm going to be introducing you to a, a really a great new medium. It's from Derevan. Now, uh, Derevan, which is a paint company uh, down in uh, Sydney, Australia. I've been working with very closely with Derevan. I love that company. I've been working very closely with them uh, for the last 12 years. As a matter of fact, our Heritage Acrylics, which a lot of you paint with, they manufacture the formula for us. Uh, wonderful, wonderful company. But uh, last year, they sent me uh, the original production stuff of this new medium right here. It's Derivan. It's Matisse's Open Medium. And what this does is it, it takes an acrylic, just like an oil, and gives it the feel in an oil. Now, I painted in oils for a number of years, and now I'm an acrylic tonal painter, so now I'm going to go back and paint wet into wet um, with this medium. What it does is it, I have been painting with it and testing with it about eight months now on several different uh, paintings, large paintings, small paintings, and uh, now I'm about to film a whole bunch of instructional videos on its uses. What it does is it has a glue in it, so you can add as much as you want. See, the problem is with a lot of our extenders, they thin things out. Just like if you use a thinner or mineral spirits with oils, they would thin it out to a point. thins out the, the glue that holds the paint to the surface, so you start running into problems. This has a binder in it, a glue in it, so you can add as much as you want, so you can get... 12 hour open times with it, it with this medium without any kind of problem so it comes really thick now let me just say this too for all of my u.s students i believe in this medium so much i love this medium so much that i bought every single jar that they had in their sydney factory two months ago and it arrives here in the united states probably next week. They put it in a container ship and send it over here. So I believe in this medium this much. I love this medium this much that I bought everything that they had and had it shipped here. So we'll have it in just a little bit available to you. But uh, does it work with all acrylics? I don't know. I know it works with our formula. It works, with, of course, with Matisse's formula. You'd have to write them and ask them because I only paint with the Heritage and it works great with the Heritage. And they assured me no problems also because, well, they make our paint and their paints as well. What I do is I just take it out and you can see it is a little bit, uh, it's, a, it's sticky. Does that make sense? I mean, it grabs on. This gives... This thicker richness to it here, it's very, very slow drying. I mixed it up, and I even mixed it up with a little bit of the um, extender, or, you know, glycol-based medium that we have here, which I have right here, thinned it out even more, and my, my acrylics didn't dry for several days. So you can use this. I mean, what I like about it is we're extenders, and I'm going to show you some new mediums and stuff in the next several videos. Extenders are really thin. This slows down the dry. But the thicker that you make a product and slow and drying, uh, slow drying, the longer it takes to dry because a thicker product dries slower than a thin product. So you can add extenders to this. It mixes up really well. But I like this. This is just real slow drying stuff that you add. And I just brush mix it right in. I'm going to put out just a little bit more. And it will and it will give your acrylics the actual feeling that you are painting. If you're used to painting in oils or if you've tried oils and stuff, it'll give you the feeling of oils and you'll be able to do a lot of your oil painting techniques. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to use both the uh, extender and it together. I got a little dirty uh, from my last painting I just did. I'll mix up some of this and we'll just mix up some color and you'll see it mixes right in, no problem. But now this, look at the transparency and you can get, you know, strokes and stuff with it. You can get nice brush variation and movement to it by the addition of it. So here's Here's my uh, burnt sienna I'm going to add right to it. I'm going to add a little bit of extender to this as well because I'm going to want to work uh, a little thinner into my background. So you can use it and you can mix up extender. For my palette I'm going to do today, this is Hansa Yellow, Darulite Yellow, um, Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, Naphthol Red Light, Pine Green, Thalo Blue. This is Red Violet, uh, Quinacridone Violet, and White. And, um, you know, my standard, my standard palette. This is the... Global Fusion Brushes. All the links for everything I do in all my videos are right down below 
in the video description. You can always click those links and see whatever the product is that I'm doing or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to add a bit of my greens to this and I'm going to start putting this out. Now this, as you can see, you get a lot of depth and movement to it. You know that I like to have movement and power to, uh, you know, my when I'm doing these types of strokes and this type of movement here. And it does. It immediately has a lot more depth to it, which I really like. Um, I'm going to put a little bit heavier. Now this, you know, you if you're not, uh, let me just say this. If, you, if you're if you a bent, and I have some of my students that are pure acrylic painters, have never really used oils, you're about to really experience what wet-on-wet -wet painting is really like here. And I'm going to do an entire series uh, starting up as soon as the um, we... The paint has arrived in the United States, but we're not going to, I mean, the mediums and stuff has, there's two of them coming, two different types of mediums. I'm going to show it on another video. Um, the, it has arrived here in the United States, but uh, it won't get here into our studio for another couple weeks. So as soon as we get it in, I'm going to be recent, releasing an entire A La Prima wet on wet series of small paintings to show you exactly how to use all of this stuff. They'll all be free. They'll all be here on the channel. So watch that for that coming. We're going to have a lot of fun because this is going to, I think Derivan has created something that's going to revolutionize acrylic painting across the whole spectrum because it is so... It is so unique. Anyway, I'm going to put just a little bit more. And you can see this will stay wet for several hours. And I can manipulate it and work it. There's nothing to worry about here with this. Um, you're going to have to learn how to control some of the consistencies of your paint. Uh, you know, acrylic painters will if you're used to something drying. Now, you can probably dry it. You know, I mean, I have. Let me just say I have. I have dried it and worked with it. And there's no problem with it. But I find if I want to, I'm going to do a, a light flower here. So I've got some, some um, burnt sienna and some green. I'm going to take a little yellow oxide. And I'm going to put a splash of that right up in here. I like to get some variations. For those of you who love impression painting like I do, impressionism, this stuff is amazing. Let's put a little cool strike of uh, some quinacridone in there as well. Just, it's just kind of fun to play these backgrounds with these colors and stuff. Now, you can use your paper towel like I like to, to pull down through and create some other visual techniques and effects and little touches and stuff like that. The nice thing is this stays nice and wet. There's no problem with it whatsoever. Create some nice, uh, you know, this is some nice backgrounding stuff for some of my flowers and stuff to sit on. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in, this is my white, I'm going to take some of this color with my white here, some of these, and I'm going to take a little bit of red and blue as well. This makes this beautiful grays here. I want to keep it on the warm side, so a bit of that burnt sienna stays in there. I'll mix it up. Now I mix it up, there's already, and you, this just feels so amazing. Those of you acrylic painters are going to notice a complete different feeling. And it's it is a little bit it's you see how it stays that's the big thing see how it stays doesn't doesn't run doesn't anything you have for me who i always talk all the time where i like to take long moving strokes you get a lot of movement of the paint out and you know i mean you can manipulate it really easy and it stays that's what i like it doesn't bleed out it doesn't move it stays it's a beautiful painting medium now i'm going to come in here and uh, start like a rose. Now this is going to be wet. This is going to, and you can see it's really thick. And I'm going to put a rose up in here, and I'm going to be painting basically the movement of the rose into the, some of this color. So I'm going to be working right into the wet background. Now acrylic artists are going to feel something completely different as you have all of this real wet color. And uh, for some of my acrylic students, this will be really difficult because you're going to have to learn the consistencies of the paint and controlling the paint and stuff. For But it's going to allow us to get all these beautiful techniques a little easier than we do sometimes. So here it stays really, really wet. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take some of my greens and some of my colors here, and I'm going to do what I call the modeling of the, of the rose. I'm going to push this. I'm going to use my finger more than anything. Actually, you don't have to worry. Everything is non-toxic. 
and I'm going to push my my colors of my rose right into my painting here right into the background I might even tap some of those other colors through so that my rose is in there so you you barely barely see that rose in there like that okay and then I'll come in and I'll pick up some more light here and I'm going to build just a bit more light and this is building the color. Now see, this is what it's like to be oil. So this is really, really wet here. And that is, you know, so many people worry about acrylics drying too, too fast. My acrylic painters will get a little frustrated in that you're working so much wet on wet. And so there's going to be a, but there's going to be a whole bunch of new techniques you're going to be able to do here. You can, you can work something really wet and really blend it like I'm going to show you in the Ala Prima series. And, or you can let something dry up just a bit. I mean, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of different ways. But I'm just going to lay out some thick color here. And I'm going to add, if it, if it dries too fast for you, add more medium to it. This isn't drying at all. You can see it's very, very thick. It's very, very wet. And you can do anything. Like, you know, if you wanted to blur, take a big soft brush like this and blur it right across the whole front of your flower just like this and put in soft blur techniques like you do with oils just is exactly the same type of thing just slowly blur it out a bit here like that that gives you some nice effects there's all kinds of nice effects that you can have let's take a bit of our cools a bit of our green some cool color here and let's just drop in the center here of our rose I drop that in, nice dark center. I'll move this color out a bit. I'm going to paint, lift back through some of my background color back up through here. Let's get some of that yellow right back in there. Let's put in some of the darks in here, just like that. As you notice, I use small deliberate strokes. You know, I, I like that. And see, I can control the edge of it really nice. And I'm using very little pressure to apply some of this because the paint is just so thick and so wet here. Okay, So, you know, if you want to get some of those really thick oil looks, rich oil looks, you can with this, with this medium really easy. So let's come out here and let's put on an outside petal here to a rose. We'll build it a bit more bit more up like that here and you can paint anywhere any any you know any type of petal you can start anywhere in your flower so normally I start up there in the bowl I'll start out here and paint some of these down maybe a little bit of a curved petal roses are circles right roses are circles so we I kind of just circle around here Let's uh, pull some colors in, but look how wet everything stays as I'm building this, and everything is really, really wet. It's so, like I can take some of this medium that's right here, or this one, and let's say I want to put another, see how wet that all is, and it just stays wet. Let's just put another rose right, that's going to be one rose right back down in here. Oh, I like that little pink there. So let's just push that right into the that rose. Matter of fact, let's push a little bit of that right into that. I like sometimes those colors to come out here. We'll play back and forth. See, I don't have to add tons of it, of this medium. The more you add, the longer the working time. So, you know, it's, I brush, just brush mix in as I need to, but you can pre-mix it in also to all your, your colors and, and just, uh, not have to worry about adding it, brush mixing it from that point on. So you can pre-mix some of this stuff in. Let's just pull some of this in, out like this. Get some of those colors in there. Let some of those nice quinacridones go in there. But like I say, you can add, um, you can add a ton of things. You can, you know, you can add extenders to it. You can use a hair dryer on it. It's not, none of that is going to hurt it. You know, it's just, it's a wonderful medium. I'm going to reach up and grab some of this little pink color. I like that. Travel right up here with some of that pink. And you can see, and just use a bit of it as an impression here for like the edge of a petal there. Let's uh, push some of that into this part of the rose there. 
we'll do more of a, a real, see, what happens is you get um, really wet, so your roses can become really soft quite easy because I'm painting really right into the wet color here. So, and you, of course, you know, you use less medium and it'll dry faster on you. Here, let's put a bit of this pink right up here like this, right up onto this side. That's kind of pretty right in there. And you can always come back with darker colors and work your, you know, work your centers again, add a little more movement to it there. Everything is going to stay wet and nice. So you can uh, continue to, you can blend, you can do whatever. It, I found with, in painting with it for the last eight months, um, blending, I like to put it on and then let it tack up just a bit. So it, because uh, uh, it's real slippery. So I like it to, to tack up or get just a little bit stiff if I'm going to blend something. So let's push in. So you can see how wet everything is. Right now it feels just like a real wet oil here. And you can see it just right here on my palette. There's no drying whatsoever coming into it here. Let's just pull in. Drop in some of these petals here. Right in like that. I'll pick up some soft color here. Pull down. So, and... You know, you can leave just a real soft effect like that on the petal, or you can develop it a little bit more, or use like the little petal edging technique that we use here, and just draw, just kind of draw a little petal there, just to give the impression of the petal, here like that, coming down in. Let's just give a little impression of the petals in here, like this is a little tea rose here, coming right here like this. There we go, around. That's kind of neat. And I don't know if the, if the uh, mics picked that up. There's one of those ultralight planes. It sounds like he's uh, flying right over the back of my trees here. Really low. <laughs> but uh, so let's push an edge to that right there. See, it's really easy. Makes a pretty little flower there. I'm going to want to bring up some more white here. So I'm going to reduce the medium here into my paint so that um, it'll dry a little quicker here and, and uh, thicken up just and stick a little bit quicker so I can build the front of my rose. And of course, you know, we build the roundness of it here. So we'll build the roundness of that. But you see, Everything here is still like really wet. I can pinch wipe my brush. You can take a, a softening, a blurring stroke right through there. Soften everything out here. It's going to stay wet for quite a long time here. And of course, you know, that's up to, you know, how much you add, what you do. Do you mix extenders with it? And I'm going to show you all kinds of ways here in the next several months how to use this for landscapes, for portraits for you know for everything for flowers of course because I like flowers sometimes I'll pull out here like this so it you know you can use some of the same calligraphy techniques that I do on some of my other videos and stuff the thing is is everything moves see with an acrylic I would let that dry and I'd put a half tone. Well, I don't need to do it now. So I'm going to use some different techniques. What I'm going to do is just pinch wipe and this is what the soft fusion brush does. And what I'm going to do is do a blur stroke right across the edge of it just like that to just kind of incorporate that or take out some of that extra white there. This is one of the things that, uh, you know, techniques that we'll be doing. I'll be doing some what I call blur strokes into it to uh, to work it. I can work more of the edge and I, I do like movement. I like my flowers and you know I paint for movement into the flowers more than anything else. I'm going to pull some color out here like this. See now everything's wet. All of my darks and stuff there are still wet and I'm going to stay wet. So I don't I don't need to dress my brush in any kind of shadow. I could but I can also just pinch wipe my brush and do a blur stroke right across the real light. I mean feather light. You're just barely touching it. And just a couple strokes like that, you can take that out, you know. So 
there's some real nice strokes we can do. Let's put a little yellow into this. And you notice I don't need to add a whole bunch of uh, paints to it right now. I mean a medium to it because everything underneath is really wet. And once I start to put other colors on top of that really wet, it, this rose will dry even slower. So right now, everything here is just staying really, really wet here. So let's come out here and push a little bit more here. And see, I can draw some real pretty little colors here out like this. And uh, I can use that petal edging technique, just that tiny little bit of light right there. You know, we talked about this in the 30-day roses. Just draw it right in. Just kind of tuck it right in like it's going to go right underneath the bowl there. And pull that in just like that. So, and you don't need much paint. Once I got all of this beautiful color moving in here, I just need the edge of the flower. Does that make sense? So I use just the petal edge to kind of draw the petal, the, the edges of the flower there, or what I want to do. So I use just a very little bit of it here, and just kind of draw this around. Sometimes I'll widen it out flat and, and push the petal on, slightly lighter. Do you see that? Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but uh, here, and so I'll just push that on. And I just kind of build my petals around the flower here. I'm going to want a little more light and I don't want it to stay too wet so I'm going to move over here off of the medium and go with some, a little bit more white and a little bit of yellow without the medium here so it'll, it will not uh, I want it to dry up a little quicker because I am an acrylic artist I do like I do have a lot of tendencies of acrylics and I like my acrylics to dry and paint with tones but this is, in, you know, and you can. You can do the same tonal type paintings with this medium. It's a wonderful, versatile medium. And it's going to really change everything we do as acrylic painters. Here. Let's, um, let's take a cooler. See how it even adding that up there. It doesn't dry. Let's just take a cooler little stroke back in here into the flower center. Here. And push up make this more a little even a little bit more into a tea rose push some light that's a little more white here push that that petal in just kind of dance that around there here like that so you draw that around isn't that kind of neat I mean you can just paint around here and try all kinds of different things now I put less medium right in here, so what I'm going to do is let that kind of tack up and dry up there so I can build. I've got some nice transparencies, translucencies to my rose. I may want to put a, go back to some of my base color. See all of my initial base color is still all wet here. And this is all still wet out here. I just might want to take a softer version of that and add like a transparent type of petal out there. Make the increase the size and power of this rose. Maybe give it a little bit of a petal edge there. Push just a bit. I like that. So now I create that nice translucent petal there. Right there like that. Let's take a bit of a red and let's do this more of a, this other one, a little bit more peach color. So a little bit of yellow and red. Let's put just a bit of medium in that. Some of our grays. So we'll do a softer little peach color. I like to, if I do that kind of stuff, I like to add a few of that tone around here. And see, this is all still wet out here. So I'm always a big advocate of carrying color, movements of color. And so let's just add a bit of that color out here so that color moves. That's the impressionist bit of it. It's a lot of fun. These are, you know, it's like I tell all of my online students, it's just a bit of paint and a board. Have some fun with it. Don't make this into like you're painting the Mona Lisa. This is the most important painting of your life. Play with it and have some fun. A brush is always moving in the motion, in the correct motion of the rose. But those of you that feel acrylics dry too fast, well, now you have something where they won't. But I do want to 
I do want to get a lot of you, and notice that I'm not cleaning my brush, adding water. Water is the fast drying component of acrylic paint. So I'm not cleaning my brush, I'm just pinch wiping my brush and working into it. I don't want to add a bunch of water because I'm just going to cause everything to dry up fast. So clean your brush this way. If you need to really clean out a color, just dip it in a little bit of extender and just wipe your brush real quick to get some of that extra color out. You know, you don't need to introduce water. So you try not to introduce water into something like this. But look at all that beautiful color we have here. Let's get some more yellows into that and push some of those colors right into this rose here. Okay, and right out here and let that soften come out. And how much medium, you're in control, how much medium you add and mix in. If you really want to play with something, pre-mix this into your colors so your colors stay wet. If you want, you know, but I like to do like I'm doing here. I've done both. My favorite way is to just brush mix. I'm a brush mixer more than anything else. A tonal painter and a brush mix painter is what really what I am. So I love brush mixing. And let's just put in a little bit of light. Push that through here like that. Let's uh, drop this deeper right in here and let's make this this rose a little bit more open, a little bit more movement back in here, just curving the brush around. I paint for movement. Everyone sees all kinds of different petals, and if I do my job correctly, you'll see all kinds of little petals and stuff like that going on. But really what I'm doing is just moving my brush around and touching it around in the little circular motion here that forms that center of that rose. And then you'll see petals and all of that other kind of stuff going on in there. Let's close up this side. Let's put a bit more white. If I want it to really stick, I'll move away from my medium, come back up over here, and it'll stick a lot better. It'll dry up a little bit faster. So sometimes I like to do that. And I'll take just a bit of that softer color and work right back down through that just a bit in there. I like that movement. That's what I like. That center movement. Let's get some of that dark of that flower right back here. I'm going to do some petals here that stick a bit more. So I'll move off away from the open medium and come back over here. So I'll work right here. These colors will stick better. Uh, I mean the open medium doesn't stop it from sticking. I don't want to say that. I just want these to dry up a little faster. So I'm moving away from the open medium. I am completely in control of the drying time of whatever I'm working on in the rows here. I'm in control of it. So that's the beautiful thing. You know, so as acrylic artists for so many years, you know, we're limited by what acrylics can do. Now we're not. We can really work some uh, some kind of fun techniques and stuff here try some new things so you can see the roses you can do all kinds of really nice things with them so i'm moving over here so they're it's drying or so it will dry a little quicker i want it to i want it to i want to put one of those yellow strokes in there put a little bit of yellow in there so there we'll just touch that in like that, see? And uh, we can do a petal edging technique right up here, kind of decide, I've got a collision of my two roses, I have to decide what petals are on top, so let's put this one right on top of that one right there. It's gonna defeat that top one, but that top one isn't done yet. So we'll drop that one in there like that. See, they kind of look like they're the same type of rose, but they're a little different from each other, and that's what I like. You know, that's what I like about the impressionistic painting is being able to get these roses and some individual life to each one here. Now, coming back over this side, let's go back up here to the grays. Now, if anything starts to tack up a little bit, you can add more medium because I haven't fed medium to this a long time. Or use just a little bit of extender right here like this to loosen it back up again. And it's just losing some of its moisture as I'm, you know, going through the day here. And and uh, so we'll just add some of that and push these colors right in like that. A little bit of movement there. And just drop that right in there. 
and uh, let's put a little bit more white I'll come over here so it sticks here there we go we'll touch one right in here and just pull that around like that you know I might want to have a bit more of my pink even a red a little different here so I can cr increase the bowl shadow right in there just work it in all that's wet see all of that is wet and it's going to stay wet here and uh, pinch wipe my brush here maybe put a warmer yellow in it there's just you know what this is going to do is allow you to play a little bit tech you know with your tones and stuff we we don't want to play too much but uh i have i'll be, I'll be honest with you i i have played and played and stressed and tried for the last eight months tried all different kinds of stuff with this medium and uh I just absolutely love it. It, But it's a different way for me. I mean, I love purely painting with acrylics and the tones that I've shown you guys for the last year, you know, during COVID and painting all these things with you. Uh, those of you that got a little frustrated sometimes with acrylics drying, you know, because you're trying to learn shape and everything, and all of a sudden, you, okay, I'm kind of understanding the shape and your darn paint's dry. Well, if you add a little bit of this stuff to it, it it you'll give you longer working time. But there'll be a there'll be a learning curve with this, and some of my pure acrylic painters will have a difficult time because you're used to it draw your paints drying. Now everything's going to stay wet, so it takes a different touch. See, it takes a different touch because everything's wet, so I have to work with a feather touch to get something to draw on to draw into this rose. And but that's okay. That's just part, and but it's going to open up a whole bunch of of uh, processes for us, and I just love it. Let's put a let's close up this edge over here. Maybe put more of a petal in like this that keeps that rose kind of open right there. Then maybe we'll close up the edge of that. So I just use this, see, just the tiniest little bit there. Just kind of close it up a bit, like it's a little T rose center here. You can do all kinds of centers. Just draw. I don't have to make a petal. I just have to draw the edge there. See? Just like that. Just a quick little edge and, and draw that. Now, let's go back up here. We'll put a little warmer yellow into this. And see, this sticks a little bit more now. Because that's dried up there just a bit. And just, it's still wet. But it's sticky. It's tacky. It's starting to dry just a bit. And uh, I know how long it takes. And there's been times where it's like, okay, it's still not dry. Well, I go put a hit, put it under the hairdryer for just a second and tack it. And then I can continue working with it here. But see how that sticks more? Now you're getting more of an acrylic stroke there. But it's still wet there, see? I can still push it and still soften that out really easy. And see, and lift some of this off. Do that lifting stroke because it's still underneath there, it's still pretty wet, so I can lift off, but it'll give you some, as it starts to dry and stuff and gets that sticky, it's going to give you some magnificent looks to your roses. It's going to give you a little more working time, those of you that get frustrated with the acrylic sometimes because of the drying or stuff, this is going to do it for you. Okay, but like I say, with everything, there will be some learning that is necessary with it. I've been painting with it for eight months now, and I really, really love it. Um, but I love my acrylics as well, so I, I like playing with techniques. I'm going to lift off, put a little bit of my gray, a little warm yellow, because I want that yellow to come back in here. So I'm going to lift some of that light off I just put on, and I'm going to touch it and lift and roll it off and there it is there now I have to get rid of that otherwise I'm going to drag it into my flower again go back reset it so I'm doing that lift off technique I showed you in the 30 days of roses quite a bit I use that technique a lot now I can use an edge just touch a little edge here and just draw like a little edge of a petal there I can smooth that out if I want to you know I'll take a just a smoother stroke here and or what I call the blurring stroke or I can come around like this and blur that just a bit so it's not quite so rough so I can get a smoother looking petal there's all kinds of ways 
And this is what I get so excited for my students because this is what's going to allow you, how you use mediums like this and do things, this is going to allow you to create your own look to flowers if you want. You know, this is, let's, let's do a edge, let's put a little gray in it and a little edge, and let's just bring out the edge of this petal just a touch more. And see, now I can... Uh, I can blend that there. Sometimes I want to just thin it out. I'm going to take some of this extender, take some of it color out of my brush, work that extender in. This is another thing I do. So I have just a little bit there and just lightly pull right down like that and see how that softens that whole effect. I'll pull it right into the shadow. Sometimes I'll wipe everything like this, tuck up right next to the petal and pull out. Give you a different look to that petal. Then I'll come back and just blur just a bit there, take off some of that. So I get some movement. Like I say, there's all kinds of stuff. Now that's stiff, so I want just a bit more now white right up there. Right up into the front, some white. Right up into the front of my rows. Right up there. Let's put a little yellow in our brush. And let's just lift off that final little bits right in there. Let's just find that bowl. Just lift off just a touch. Lift off just a bit. Maybe an edge, just a corner. We'll shape up this petal a bit here. Let's draw that around a bit. Maybe push it to blur it together. There, that's not too bad. You can draw another little petal. Pull down something like that. Just all kinds of ways. Nice big busy rows here. I like I like this movement in there. Don't like to get it too smooth. I like movement. And I am playing quite a bit, so but just to show you, you can play and play and play and get all kinds of you know different works, you know, looks there like that. Let's take um, some more burnt sienna, some green, maybe a bit of red to cool that down here. You can do some of your negative painting here. Pop out some of your other colors here. You can put out, you know, like you got yellow up there. You can put in a little yellow blossom or something right up here. Let's just, let's just splash on a quick little yellow type blossom right here. Now it's a bit... It, it's still wet still see it's still you can pick up and you can leave that it's still wet um, but it starts to uh, get just a bit sticky and if I come back in it with more medium or a little bit of extender or something like that it would go right wet again so it's uh, you know it, it's really it's really neat you're going to be able to you know work through but it's going to take some practice just like with me, it took practice. I'm just going to do a quick little soft blossom here. Lighter color. And let some of that just soften out. I like sometimes little sparks of brighter color. The impression part of it here that goes through. Some of that there. Let's spark that, some of that. Add a bit of medium here to this. Let's spark some right up here to some yellow ones right up in there that would be kind of pretty we'll put a little light into that this is one I really like to do when I paint fast don't and see the nice thing is because this medium keeps your colors thicker because it's thicker so you know you know how in in all the lessons I, I tell you guys we like to model colors I don't like to mix if you're using really thin acrylic, your colors mix together really fast. But by using Derivan's uh, open medium, what happens is uh, the colors don't mix as well, as quickly, because it's thicker and sticky. Does that make sense? So you can take some, some more manipulative strokes here on the, uh, you know, on the palette and really change and try and get some different types of modeling mixes like I do when I paint the flowers and stuff. So, yeah, we can try some different things. Get some of that Darulite in there, a bit of light. Let's put a bit of the medium in there. And uh, 
let some of these come out some of these lights let's get some let's go back to a, like a yellow oxide out here just let some of that see I love this kind of impressionism it's kind of like okay I'm gonna start to feel some yellows or some blossoms in there but you don't have to paint them all exactly you just kind of give the idea of the shape there you don't have to do them exact like that that's kind of neat draws that down and uh, let's take a little burnt sienna into the centers there just right on the corner and a bit of that medium so I get some of that translucency with that see I like that so you know I use this to to uh, get more see how much more modeled interest the color has because you're you're allowing more light to pass through the layers of your color so you're making the paint more translucent and you control that by how much of that medium you add using just the corner of your brush push it around a bit here and try some of that let's put now let's go more op opaque to push in some yellows here yellow centers there that's kind of nice just little touches ideas of the center we're just doing a quick little painting just to to try and play now I, you know I have some of my students some of you guys out there some of my students out there you've been acrylic painters all your life some of you will find this a little frustrating because it's really wet some of you are going to go oh my goodness um, and it's going to be very different and uh, I love it but if you go approach it like this you know you're heading right towards an oil and painting with an oil and if you head that you know with that type of idea let's take a little lighter green you know to it there you're going to be able to you know really create some really wonderful techniques let's go a little darker here push in a little more contrast maybe a little negative painting there push in a little bit more I don't want to lose all of that and I like that little pinky color right there so I'll just take some of that back maybe just a bit of that negative painting right there just pull let some of that green come through that's what the impressionists do here let's push just a bit of that green right up here let that come in with that uh, little blossom there so it's very different um, and the feeling is going to be very different and like I say it will take there is a bit of a learning curve if you're coming from pure acrylics and have not painted with oils before there's a bit of a learning curve into learning the consistencies of the paint and you know so but it's going to open up quite a bit of uh, new techniques that acrylic painters are going to be able to do which I like just going to go a little lighter a little yellow white and you can see everything just stays wet see everything's still wet and the thing is it's thicker though it's thicker than extender and so we're working with heavy body which is the one thing that oils really are nice for because you can work with them stay wet and stay heavy bodied now the acrylics can Dervan has a magnificent medium here it's just magnificent um, and I think it's going to revolutionize the acrylic painting painters that's why I ordered so much of it yeah and they're supposed to be making more but uh, I was just like I want everything you have and uh, because I think it's going to be wonderful and I'm going to do a whole bunch of series of techniques with it a little brush dance here a little movement and stuff take some of that out of there let's go even a little darker a little cooler a little deeper here and of course this is and that puts in look at that nice deep and rich color coming through there that nice contrast let's put a let's put a green stroke down through that and just break some of that up just a bit that might be a bit too 
perfect there. Break the edge. That's a little better. Little strokes, little negative painting to push in. Let that rose come out, that blossom come out of that. That's kind of nice. You can drop in some stems, some nice cool colored stems here, green and the uh, red violet. So over the next few months, I'm going to have a lot of videos coming up here on the channel and into my classrooms and stuff, showing all kinds of uh, things. And I'm going to be doing a lot more portraits and stuff. I'm doing a whole portrait series um, in the uh, um, the S. Uh, 202 art of seeing class and some of those portraits I'm going to be using the open mediums and another medium which I'll introduce you to we're going to show you how to make really thick extender really really thick extender and in some of my tests with that my colors on my palette stayed wet for five days now I don't I'm an acrylic painter I don't like anything to stay wet that long but what I also am is a teacher and everyone is different, and it's a nice thing to try. And, you know, for me, it's like taking these like this and being able to manipulate it to do different things. That's what's going to open up all of our creativity and give us all different kinds of ideas, you know. And when I was an oil painter, I was always hindered by the, I always was hindered by the, oh, you know, the oils have got to dry or, you know, and, Back in my day, we used the really toxic cobalt dryers, which we didn't know at that time. And, uh, you know, that, of course, now we don't use those. But, uh, you know, I had to uh, um, wait for those oils to dry to do some things. Just going to push a little more yellow back down through here. I like that little spark of those pinks. Um, so, you know, but... Now, you're going to have a medium acrylic that, okay, if you want an area to dry, well, you just use less of this medium. Look at that nice spark. You use less of the medium. If you want it to stay wet longer, several hours, use more. That's up to you, you know. That's the beautiful thing. Let's put a little darker back in there. I like some of these just real impressionistic sparks of color. To me, that just adds so much. And, and of course, this is the complement to the yellow. So it just pushes that up there really nice. And you know, that is, uh, this right up here is still a little wet. It's, it's almost dry. I'm going to take just a tiny bit of water here and pull right through to, to, to blur out that edge just a bit to soften some of those edges right up there. So that kind of gives me a different mark. And let's just pull that right off of that. Um, yeah, and let some of that blur up there. I like that. Maybe a bit of an edge right here. So that comes up on top of that one. All kinds of ways. There's, you know, all kinds of ways you can do things. But uh, it does give you a, a lot more. And you can still see those roses and everything in the wet areas and stuff I'm working with. Some of the original stuff that's out here is a little dry. But if I fed extender to it, if I put a little bit of extender into that and touched out to here, it'll reconstitute. See that? It'll, re it'll reconstitute and rework again, and I can move it out and do all kinds of stuff there. That's a little too much extender, but I'll just take some of that out. I'm going to take some of that nice pinky out there, though. That looks kind of neat. And... I like those, you know, I love the Impressionist painters when they, you know, get those little sparks of color and stuff going out. Little, little bits of that going out and looking at some of that. See, I like that. And uh, let's push a nice soft, put some of this medium in here so I get some transparency here. Right out here like this. Look at the colors that come off of your brush from some of your pinks and greens here. You know, that's just real pretty coloring there. Yeah, that works pretty nice. Let's go a little bit lighter yellow-green. A little white, a little medium here. And just pull some of that out here. There's some color, some other leaves. 
some touches there. I'm going to build this leaf up a bit more. There. Let's take it out and let's just finish this up by maybe a light little stroke for some vein lines. This could have a better edge on this one. You know, I, I like to paint edges sometimes and get those. Here, let's put an edge right out through there on that one. And um, maybe a little bit there, a little light, a little bit of light, a little bit of light, Dave. <laughs> it's just going to stick there for a light vein line. And uh, that worked pretty well. It's a fun little, uh, fun little painting there. Different look to it. Now you can, if you want it softer, you can, uh, you know, pull some, even some water, you know, like I've done with you before. Take a bit of that medium and pull some of these colors here and push these right into real soft and transparently here, you know, into the background to get some of those colors through. And that medium will just start to, you'll just start to slowly gray down you know, your background, and that might be kind of nice back down here. Put a bit of that in there, just a bit, to let some of that come through. Here, just a bit of that transparent. So you're starting to take down some of the lightness of that background, just a bit with some of your, your other colors and stuff like that. It gives you a nice look. It's a different look. You know, and that's what I like is all different kinds of look. I like to paint very formal florals. I like to do really, really colorful florals. I like to do all kinds of stuff. Now, I might I might take a stroke or two more onto those white roses to really pop them up. But, uh, boy, they're really wet. So, you know, it'd be, it, sometimes I'll just let that. We might be able to get that. Yeah, it's going to stick there. That'll be all right. I use less medium right in there so but uh, you know if it does have a hard time sticking just let it dry up a bit and then you can get a few more light little final lights stuff here onto your flowers that's nice maybe a little bit more yellow right in there yeah that works this fun and you know, the, the the thing that I say when you're coming out with a, you know, a new medium or a new way it's a, is to play, really, play. Play with it. Try it on all different kinds of things. Put it through its test. That's what I've been doing for eight months with it, trying all different kinds of stuff. I, one one day I went into the studio. I, I turned on a hair dryer so I had hot air blowing over with me and started painting and to see what happens, how fast it dries out. You need to learn it. Um, you know, you need to learn it and how quick stuff dries and everything. And that's just all part of our process. I'm going to build these just a bit more back there. Soften that in. See, that's still wet back there. But um, you try it, okay? It's a lot of fun. So this is a brand new medium. Now I'm going to be showing, this is the open medium. We have others. They, or Derivan has others um, that work with our paints and stuff here. Um, and I'm going to be showing them. But I'm going to do an entire challenge series for you of called Olaprema Painting with Acrylics. Now, Olaprema is wet on wet. You finish it all in one setting. You try to do it in under an hour or two hours. And uh, it's a wet on to wet painting there. I'm going to do an entire Olaprema series with these colors showing you some landscapes, some flowers. We'll do a small portrait, that kind of stuff, and um, show you how you paint wet into wet, okay? And it'll be a lot of fun, all right? Okay, so make sure you subscribe, and make sure, now that I'm reading, that you know, little bell, you hit that, because some of you are writing to me and saying, you know, I'm not getting notification when you're launching videos. There's something about some little bell. I don't know that much. If you do, put it in the comments down there. So if you tell everybody something about clicking the bell, you know, so you get notified when new videos are coming. So we try to do a couple videos a week. We're going to increase that just a little bit here through the fall as we uh, start to show you some of these other types of techniques. We'll probably go up to three, maybe even four videos a week. So you just get notified if you subscribe and then click that. You'll get notified. Uh, you know when those videos are up and when they launch and uh, please uh, 
click like to the video. We really would appreciate it, okay? All right. I'll see you guys on the next one in just a couple days. We'll have another one back up showing you a different thing. Maybe we might do a landscape or something like that with that, okay? All right. I'll see you on another one.